Two women are doing important things. No, but something went over the edge. Oh, it wasn't me. I promise it. It, it was me. It was okay. me. That was me. <laughs> okay. No big deal. We just put that over the live radio. That is very, very good example for our episode <laughs> one of what this looks like. Welcome to the Holy Mess Podcast with Becca and Joy. If you think you're a mess, you're not alone. We talk about the things of life through the lens of faith. Whether it's pop culture or the things that stress us out, we help you find the holy moments in all of it. My name's Becca, and my mess comes from being a caregiver to my husband, Joey. He has a chronic illness. He's been sick for five and a half years. I'm Joy, and my mess comes from being a brand new mom and a reluctant pastor's wife. Today, we're talking about handling toddler tantrums, how to be there for your friends when they're hurting, and shit. Chick-fil-A has made a new enemy. But first, our messy moments of the week. So you know how you have a routine when you're headed out the door, right? And Mm -hmm. for me, it's I wake up, I get ready, I put the dog out in the yard, I get my lunch together, throw it in the car, bring her in, she gets her treat, I leave, right? That's the nice part about a dog, you can just leave them. I don't think you probably have a routine that goes quite like (laughs) that. No, I don't. There's usually some screaming and crying (laughs) from one of you. Forcing into a car seat. Yeah, so Hadley just loves to be in the yard, you give her some time. so she's good, I'm good to go. However, this week, I get to work. I'm starting my day. I'm probably an hour and a half in. And my husband, Joey, who had gotten to sleep in that day, texted me and said, is Hadley in the yard? He was home. He was home. And he woke up to her barking because she had been in the yard for two whole hours. (laughs) He woke up to her abandonment issues coming to light. (laughs) issues coming to light. That's exactly it. So when you talk about, you know, how being a dog mom, yeah, it's not a real thing, obviously, because if I had a real child, I don't know that they'd be alive. Oh, snap. Girl, how was she when he brought her in? He he said she was thrilled. Maybe you need to leave her in the yard for like three hours a day. Possibly. But ever since then, he's been like... Hadley, remember when your mother forgot you? <gasps> remember when she abandoned he you? He is not on your team. How dare you? Listen, it's everybody forgets dog. things. You know that. You forget stuff all the time, whether it's a dog or, you know, other <laughs> stuff. Child? <laughs> Listen, I forgot. Well, if uh, my messy story of the week is I forgot my coffee mug on a neighbor's porch. Oh, well, that's porch. not nearly as much as a dog, <laughs> but. It was actually when my job was melting down. He's newly in daycare and like, you know, if you're a parent that there's like no rule book, you have no idea what you're doing. And so he started throwing full on tantrums. I blame the other bad kids at school. Yep. And it's all their fault. Yeah. He loves to go for a walk. I let him go further from our house than we'd ever gone. And I was like, this is delightful. I'm going to drink my coffee. He just learned how to walk. He's like having a blasty blast. And then it was time to turn around. He was like, I will not. <laughs> and I just, like, it's it's psycho how a child can go from being so sweet to being, like, so evil in, like, a second. It just it's, switches. It completely switches. And he started, like, full-on screaming, throwing his head back, melting down, crying. And I, in panic mode, just sat my coffee mug wherever we were on someone's front step and then just, like, handled the situation. I had to carry him kicking and screaming home, which... Go ahead. You can go ahead and comment if you have like any parenting advice for how to have handled that better. Because people are always like, you should have tried X, Y, Z. I don't think there's anything better. <laughs> who, who has not had a child meltdown? We had to go home. You know, at some point you have to go home. Um, He even bit me on the way home. Okay. So that's great. We're doing awesome. Um, But it was just, it was such a struggle moment. And here's what I'm realizing is that. I obviously have no control over this kid, but I think the point, I don't know, I'm only a year in, I think the point of parenthood is that they're supposed to figure out how to be healthy, independent people who don't need you anymore. He's walking more and more, Becca, and like, I mean, I know you take Hadley for walks, there are a lot of correlations here, but Hadley still needs you, she needs the leash. Judah now doesn't hold my hand as much, that's my son. He doesn't hold my hand as much anymore, and as he like walks off on his own potentially into the street potentially to go find your coffee cup that got abandoned i hope i I just literally look at him and i'm like what is this like this is going to be the rest of the time he's going to continue to need me less and less and as that's like a victory this is what moms say help me with this they say that's good that's the point but it breaks your heart i'm like how am i supposed to process that my kid 
getting more independent is like a win, but I don't I want him to need me. Yeah, because eventually you want him to leave the house and have a career and have a family of his own. Like that's mm. the goal, right? Okay, can but I tell you? But what feels like success is heartbreaking. What they say specifically about boys is that it's super heartbreaking for mom's hearts because boys get married hopefully one day and then as we're both wives, the wife kind of tends to run the social calendar of the family mm, or tends mm-hmm. to like you know, be like, we're going to be with my family when these big events happen because I'm so close with them. And then the husband's like, we'll, we'll see my mm-hmm. family when mm-hmm. we can. Yeah. That's what they say. That's not what they don't say. We'll see my family when we can. They go, whoa. <laughs> That's usually the response. That's exactly it. My parents, my in-laws are always like, why don't we ever see you? My husband's like, whoa. That's <laughs> exactly. literally it. Exactly. And so I'm afraid that one day I like really won't get to see him. So they say girls stay close with their family mm. forever. But boys, it really depends on the woman they marry. So I'm already praying for his wife that she loves me and wants to visit all the time. And he's one. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that's part of it, right? Like, I don't know. I think if you didn't care about this stuff, if you weren't already stressed about who he's going to marry and if they're going to love you, you know. 20 plus years in the yeah. future i don't i don't think that you'd probably be doing it right i think mm-hmm. the point of parenting and this is completely from an outsider's perspective is to be heartbroken all the time oh. seems, seems miserable it does but at the same time this is what i couldn't have grasped before i became a mom is that the moments that are so sweet and life-giving are so off the charts wonderful as short as they may be that they can tend to make up for like a lot <laughs> a lot of tantrums and sins and broken hearts because when they're like asleep they're just the best <laughs> now question when he is melting down on one of your walks yeah. you know kicking and screaming all of a sudden he weighs 80 pounds you don't know how it happened because when he throws a tantrum it's like you've added weight to yourself yeah. somehow can you in your right mind visualize the good moments and the sweet moments oh no it's out the window Mm-mm, not in that moment no. no in fact the specific story that i told you today I, I need to go to CrossFit. I'm getting less strong. Like, oh. literally, because I have, I mean, I haven't worked out much in last year, but he's getting bigger and stronger, and I can't control him very well. So I was literally, like, sweating, and I would put him down every few minutes to try to get him to walk again, and he would defy me every time and go the opposite way. And so when I finally got him home, I was sweating and so upset back that I just, like, put him in a safe place <laughs> and went on the porch and closed the door and cried. Because I didn't want him to see me melt down, but I had to let it out. I was just like he's a monster. (laughs) You know, it just like, it was so upsetting and he had bit me. And so that also was like, my child intentionally hurt me, but I know he didn't mean any of that. And I called my husband and I, in in moments like that, you need somebody else to go. Remember that this is a good thing. And God made this child for us. Remember you love him. Exactly. (laughs) And I, of course that came back, but I had needed like half the day to cool off from that one. That was, and that was like one of the worst moments that we've had. So yeah, in those moments, it's not like, the sweetness is in the forefront of your mind by any means. But I love that you are honest about having to take a moment because that's what everyone says is you got to make me time, which let's be honest, is garbage advice. What is me time? That's what I was just going to ask you. Define me time for us because clearly neither of us know. (laughs) I think it's a bath. (laughs) I mean, sometimes yes, but honestly, sometimes when life is chaotic and swirling around you, it is just stepping on the porch and going, (laughs) That's, that's all you can do. That's a moment for you. Yeah, yes. that works. Speaking of those moments, uh, we are going to cover what we have learned in therapy from time to time. And boy, do I have one for you. It's a little sad. I, but I'm so grateful that you go. This is a huge thing that Becca and I both advocate. If you've never gone to talk to somebody that you're not like related to or in relationship with, highly recommend. And there's just, honestly, there's a lot of insurances that give like a couple of free sessions. When I very first started going, I think I got three or five. And so finances not be a part of it. There's a lot of them that do like sliding scales. So that's my quick counseling soapbox. I just went today. We'll cover what I talked about later. But how long have you been going and what triggered you to start going? So I've been going for four years now and it was triggered by my husband's illness. I probably should have gone before he he got sick, but I just always, you know, had a million excuses. Yeah. But when he got sick, it was like, I cannot manage this on my own. That's so wise. To, people always ask, how do you find a counselor? One, always look up Christian counseling centers in your area. It's a great place to start. Or for me, I went to psychologytoday.com. They have a therapist finder that you can even get specific with. Oh, wow. So I go to a therapist who specializes in caregiver stress wow. and caregiver guilt. Oh, it's that's amazing. Hyper specific. 
but it's what I need as someone who takes mm-hmm. care of someone who is constantly in the hospital and constantly ill. Yeah. And so this week, I was I just went in with a heavy heart. It honestly started because I was killing time before my appointment and I went into at home the store with all the oh, like pretty signs. I love that place but I never buy anything. Yeah, I love it too. And I like to look at the little signs with the fun phrases on them because they're usually fun. I saw you took a picture of I this. I did because there was an end cap and it had signs that said things like, look on the bright side. No excuses. Don't wish for it. Work for it. <laughs> yes, you can. And I in that home goods or at home, felt attacked oh, by, by the, the signs. signs. Because in that moment, I'm like, I, I don't, I can't see a bright side. He's mm. actively sick right now. He's nauseated. He's throwing up. I do not see a bright side today. And they're like f- saying, they're forcing you to. They're saying you should to. be able to yeah. do it. And it, look, if you're the kind of person who has this on your wall, bless you. You are a gift to humanity. We need you in our lives oh, because yeah. sometimes it's hard to see those things. But for me, I went to therapy and that was the thing I started with is I am not feeling these signs. I'm just really impressed that you had a moment like that and then went, I need to talk to somebody about this. I think that's something that going to therapy develops in you when something happens and you go, this might not be like a normal reaction to this. Let me talk to somebody about it. And that you happened right before. Yeah. And there are a lot of times that when we share a little bit, tidbits about our therapy sessions, I think there's insights that we learn and, and big, powerful moments. I didn't get that this week, but what I got was someone who said, this is the space where you get to be sad. And mm. I needed that. And yeah. I think all of us need that. Maybe for you, it's therapy. Maybe it's just that friend where you can go and take your heavy burden and they just shoulder it with you for a second. Mm-hmm. It can be hard to always feel like you are the bad thing. You are the sad thing all the time. I get it. Yeah. I've had a lot of lot of moments of that. But find a safe place because you're going to have those feelings and you have to have somewhere to take those feelings, to be a better caregiver, to be a better mom, to be a better worker, a better daughter, a better human. You have to have somewhere to process that. I'm so glad that Becca is talking to us about this because there's so much sadness in the world right now that I think we can't really take it all in. So we push it aside and we just like look at fun cute memes and because that's what the signs at, at home say exactly to do. <laughs> and that's okay there's nothing wrong with escaping no. it sometimes but what you're saying is you can't always escape it right. there needs to be a space and my husband being a minister means i get like you know 24 7 access to somebody who knows the bible way better than <laughs> i do and he talked to me recently about how in the Bible and in Bible times, they knew how to mourn. It was actually a season of their lives. They would cover themselves in sackcloth and ashes. And like people would come with someone when someone passes away to a tomb or something who were like the criers. You were to cry with that person. And now anymore, we're so discomforted by sadness that we we have so many things to escape with it from it that we don't sit in it and so he just said like we've forgotten how to mourn and god's it's actually kind of a gift to be able to get those feelings out process them with god and other people because we know enough now if you don't mourn if you don't have sadness in your life in moments it comes back out we all saw inside out you can't have real (laughs) joy without sadness and i think this is another uh, insight too is that if you have someone who is sad to just sit with them we have a pastor friend pastor chad yes Uh, he's a way fm prayer pastor he shared a quote from pastor rick warren with me and it was the greater the tragedy the fewer words are needed sometimes it's really is just sitting with the person yeah sometimes you say the trite expression because you want to be like fixed it bye done yeah but i gotta say something it's okay to be like this is hard and i'm sorry and i'm here yeah, I want to, can we camp here for just one second? Yeah. Because Becca understands this better than most people because you've been through a lot of really tough stuff. What is ideal, and everyone's different, for somebody to do when you want to sit with somebody in the sadness as we're talking about? I think if you if you know anything about Enneagram, uh, it helps to know Becca's a four, so she is excellent at understanding emotion meeting people there i'm a six i'm scared of all those things and more (laughs) but But i'm very loyal you're the loyalist exactly (laughs) i have i have great qualities i'm still discovering them but i would say that you're great at going there and people who aren't forced are sometimes scared to sit with somebody so can you give us a quick roadmap what does it look like to sit with somebody in sadness absolutely first of all it depends on the relationship if you don't know someone super well just do something Anything. Send them a food gift card. Send someone to their house to mow the lawn. Just 
do something. Don't ask. Just do it. That's Be like, very helpful. Here's an Uber Eats card to deliver you food so you don't have to worry about that. I'm praying for you. And sometimes we're afraid it's going to be the wrong thing. And so then we want to like is never ask. the wrong thing. <laughs> just, just FYI. Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell, yeah. Burger King, milkshakes. Never yes. the wrong thing. <laughs> if you are close to the person, if you already have an intimate relationship, just make yourself available. One of my very good friends lost her husband a couple weeks ago. And I flew down for the funeral. And I was like, I'm here. And I'm happy to come over. I'm also, it's also okay if, if it's not the right time. And she invited me in and I just sat and I listened. So you and it didn't was, even there was no say advice. anything. Yeah. Don't give advice. You don't have advice to give mm-hmm. unless you have been through that exact circumstance. Mm-hmm. Just be there. And I think if you have been through the exact circumstance, there will probably be a time and place that yes. that person comes to you and yes. says, help. Like I saw that in my, uh, my husband and I host a life group at our house, a Bible study, when you call it whatever you want. And one of the sweet girls has been walking through a very painful divorce and two other women in our group have been divorced and they didn't go to her and say like, this is, this is my roadmap for you. She, when she was ready, went to each of them at different times and said, what can you tell me? And so if, if you're a good friend, know that that person will eventually want your roadmap. I also heard someone, this was actually in the, con- the context of motherhood, which is something I don't understand personally, but she said, someone came to me and said, would you like some advice? And she's like, yes, I would. Wow. And, and there are days that I would say, no, I would not. Exactly. <laughs> Again, it really depends on how close you are to the person, but at a base level, feed them. And if you're close to them, just listen and be there. And that's it. So good. See, this is why counseling is important. (laughs) Totally advocate one last time for you to go. Becca, thank you for sharing that with us. That's powerful. And so now we're going to move into uh, our mess and bless of the week. We're each going to bring you one good thing, one bad thing from pop culture life for this week. So my mess of the week is dumb scientists. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. They spend all this time coming up with new information that just kind of infuriates me sometimes. (laughs) They have now decided that it's not about how much sleep you get. So like getting your seven hours or whatever they said before. They say that the best thing for your health and specifically your heart health is to go to bed between 10 and 11 p.m. That makes no sense. It makes no sense because we all wake up at different times, but they're saying this is how your body's rhythms work. This is when you need to be asleep so that your heart can recover for the next day. This is my problem. The older I get, I can barely stay up past 9 (laughs) o'clock. And this time of year, it gets dark at like 4.30. Oh, girl, I've been thrilled to put my jammies on early and earlier. But I don't really understand why the focus would be on rhythms. They're saying it's more on like... Quant, really still kind of quantity, the type or then quality. Am I right in saying that? Because I wake up like five and six times a night with my toddler right oh. now. It doesn't matter when I go to bed. I'm still going to die from heart disease. Okay, so what understand. we've learned is these scientists are not moms. No. They are not tired working adults. I don't know what they're doing with their life. Apparently just vacationing and occasionally doing sleep studies. But I do not think they know what they're talking about. This also furthers our case that most people have that daylight saving time is not oh, even smart. Garbage. The fact that we change twice a year means that when you try to go to bed between 10 and 11, it's different times for your body. Maybe. There's a deeper conspiracy and they're just messing with us. So we die of heart disease? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to your positive moment of the week. <laughs> okay, my mess of the week is straight up evil brought to us by something. Have you ever called, have you ever heard of mischief? It's like a company. Oh, I was like, like the action? <laughs> Very oh. familiar. I say mischief, but it's like the word mischief without any vowels. It's M S C H S. Yes. Um, so apparently they're into these like massive showy stunts that basically go against hierarchy and everything. Well, they've decided to go against God's chicken. They're against Chick fil A. Not Chick fil A. They are oh. coming for Chick fil A. You have messed with the wrong. Fast food chain. Right? Because, let me give you quick Chick-fil-A history you didn't ask for. I used to work there. Dan Cathy started Chick-fil-A a bazillion years ago, and he kept it closed on Sundays so that his employees could rest because he's a Christian, and it was based in his Baptist faith, that he wanted to rest on Sundays, and he said, you don't have to, but it's based in religion for me, so it will remain closed on Sundays. And they've been wildly successful Still. being open six days a week. Yeah. And so because of that, they are delivering people Chick-fil-A on Sunday. Mischief is? Yes, but here's Mischief. what's even worse. They're buying the sandwiches from Chick-fil-A and they're putting them in, get this, 
a 666 bag no. because they're the devil. No. And they're selling them for $6.66. And oh my no gosh. one's even talking about how these sandwiches are clearly going to be a day old, which Chick fil A is not that good when it's cold. And they're going to be delivering to people. This is mostly, it's. I think it's only in Europe right now that they're doing it. But I am just beyond, the whole point is to make people upset and they've accomplished it. Becca, look at the. Oh. They used a crown of thorns and red and black That's in the imagery. That's so sacrilegious in so many ways. It's so evil and they're trying to get people fired up and it's working. I'm like angry about it. But here's what's great. Chick-fil-A doesn't even have to worry. They're still going to make all their money. They're yeah. still going to serve chicken. And these people are probably going to give someone food poisoning. Probably, yes. So that's a risk you have to take and you're paying like more for it. I don't even think a number one is 66666. Definitely not. But here's the holy moment in that. When you do things according to God's plan, when you follow through with like, hey, we've decided to take a Sabbath, we're going to continue to take a yes. Sabbath. Like we said, they've been wildly successful. This company that's doing this, mm-hmm. it's going to be a blip in the radar. It's obnoxious. makes me angry. Oh, yeah. But they're not going to build a chicken empire. <laughs> They're not going to have a Kanye West song about them, okay? Yeah, they're just having some mischief for the moment. They're so you're not going to win. Side note, I'm totally pro-Sabbath. This is like a new part of my life. Oh, we can yeah. talk about this in yes. another episode. but I want to hear. It's literally in the Ten Commandments. And like I've never... I grew up as a pastor's daughter as well. You should know that. So like very involved Sundays in the church. Sundays were probably crazy. Sundays have always been crazy in my life. I kind of dreaded them. And now that I'm married to a pastor, I hardly see my husband on Sundays. So I'm taking Sabbath on Saturdays, but I've never done it in my life. Mm. I've not, It's not been set for me as, as an example to rest in any way. So we can get into that another episode, kind of what it looks like for me. It's not perfect by any means, but I'm trying. I, I can't wait to have that conversation. Yeah. Okay, on to our blog. Bless of the week. My bless is the mother of a Fortnite player. So his name is Benji Fishy online. <laughs> I was going to say, that's not a mother given name. No, that it, I think his name is Benji, but he goes by Benji Fishy. Uh, first of all, guess how much he makes a year playing Fortnite? <laughs> Sorry, one of our coworkers, Steve, is looking in the recording window We're like, a podcast. what? Two women are doing important things. No, but something went over the edge. Just trying to figure out what it was. Oh, it wasn't come on. me. I promise it. It, it was me. It was okay. me. That was me. <laughs> okay. No big deal. Like we deal. just put that over the live radio. Nope. No big deal. You know deal. what? I am blaming Wally because this is his voice. Pro, pro, yes, actually, prod. side side note, this is only for you on the podcast. I, I pulled that up for something the other day, and there was one or two channels that were in the yeah, wrong he has it in thing. One. That's not my fault. That's yeah, not Wally. It's the, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> it is. Okay, so that is very very good example for our episode <laughs> one of what this looks like. But also, we do live radio shows, yes. so there's that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the 17 year old kid makes money playing Fortnite online. Guess how much he makes a year? $300? $187,000. What? Yes. Playing Fortnite? Playing Fortnite. But here's the cool part. This is why it's my bless. Otherwise, I'd be like, a 17-year-old makes more than I do. That is a mess. No. So his mom was like, you know what? I need to figure out what all of this is about. Because my son's making more money than me. (laughs) So in her 50s, she starts playing. She now has a half million followers on streaming platforms. And now she has her very own gaming contract as well. So they play separately. I'm sure they play together sometimes as well. So she did it to understand him. Yes. And now (gasps) she's actually making money. Not as much as he is because he's been doing it longer. But I mean... I just could not imagine my parents when I was growing up being like, oh, you're into this? Okay, let me try to figure it out by doing it. No. But she went all in, and it's paying off for her. Do you think this means I'm going to have to play a video game one day? It means you're going to have to play Fortnite No, I don't want to do any of it. The skins, the dances, I don't want any of it. There's some weird, I think that's where flossing came from. It it is, and I still can't do it. Can you? Nope. I wish. But you know what? It came and went so fast. Who even cares? <laughs> There'll be Girl. something new by the time that your baby Jude is older. I'm also pretty excited that you can make that much money playing video games. Like these kids who want to be YouTube stars and stuff, it makes sense to me when they can make that much money before they're even 18. But just keep this information from Judah. Tell him that you can only make money if you go into a respectable career path. <laughs> if you work the hard way and go to college. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, my bless of the week that we will end on is that... 
there is an Amazon review going viral, which I love a good review for yes. clothing that's actually yes. accurate. A woman gave her leggings five stars because she rolled down the side of a Rocky Mountain and those puppies didn't even rip. <laughs> she posted. <laughs> I, did you see those? No. She posted photos of her, no joke, like slowly falling down the side of a mountain she did she mean to do this <laughs> well apparently she climbed up but then she was too afraid to stand up and just decided it was best to like semi fall back <laughs> down. I, I just relate to it so much because i'm afraid of heights and i've been in a lot of precarious situations yep. <laughs> my husband's very adventurous and the official name for these leggings is ray pose women's yoga running capri leggings and so she posted photos and she gave it five stars and now people are ordering them like crazy she says these leggings did not even rip i got stuck on rocks and trees and they withstood the entire thing order them now <laughs> they're only 22.99 this is the stuff i need in my life i don't care that you look like cute when you're just in your room and you're looking in the mirror i need to uh. know do they ride up do they oh, roll down yes. do they show underwear lines that stuff is i important. need to know if my son's boogers that he wiped on my leg yes. will come off in the wash these I are need- the kind of things we want to talk about real world examples that these legs are going to keep me safe. What I love is people are now ordering the leggings and then they're taking pictures of themselves in similar, not as dangerous <laughs> positions, laying on rocks and being like, these leggings are the best. This is what the internet's for. I mean, these kind of reviews and this kind of encouragement. I hope I never fall down a mountain, but if I do, I hope my pants withstand. <laughs> <laughs> much for listening if you got something out of this episode would you consider sharing it with a friend and leaving us a review for more holy ish moments you can follow <laughs> us on instagram at way fm afternoons or at becca acre that's b-e-k-a-h-e-a-k-e-r because i have obnoxious spellings of both of my <laughs> names and thank you so much for being a part of our messy family